let me uh, let me break some news here. You might you might not have heard. Uh, it's it's really not leading the news uh, in the mainstream media for some reason. I just can't figure out why. Uh, an Act Blue donor uh, shot. Uh, President Donald Trump, July 13th, another act blue donor uh, attempted to uh, assassinate him on Sunday. And it turns out that they've now arrested an Alaska man. He was arrested two days ago. Did you even hear this story? I did. Okay. I don't did. think many people did. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was arrested on Wednesday for allegedly threatening to torture and slaughter six U.S. Supreme Court justices. It's weird. You stop at six. Yeah. I wonder why. What six? Well, it's six Is three. It, I don't know if that could be any. Could be specific any specific six. Could be any of them. Could right? be any. Of we them. don't know. We have no he idea. He might have taken the women, probably the women, and uh, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. and killed them twice. Maybe he did it by height. Maybe yeah. he was looking for the six shortest Not justices. Sure. I don't know. So uh, he's given uh, he's given eighty contributions uh, to Act Blue and the Democrats. Um, Anyway, Department of Justice announced Thursday uh, that he's been charged with nine counts of making threats against a federal judge and 13 counts of making threats on interstate commerce. Uh, the, D- the DOJ refrained from indicting uh, or indicating which six justices he was after. So we don't know. We just don't know. Who could possibly guess? I, I, don't, I know. don't know. What would an Act Blue donor <laughs> want from the Supreme Court? Like, don't can know. We, we can't answer that mm-hmm. question. We don't know. We don't have any mm-hmm. idea. He said, uh, the uh, Justice Department said they uh, that this was intended to intimidate the six unnamed justices and retaliate against them for actions they had taken in their official capacity as federal justices. Which six? Which happened? I don't know. He allegedly threatened to hang a specific justice from an oak tree, but we don't know which one, (laughs) to lynch another, uh, and to kill a third by putting a bullet in his head. Uh, He also threatened Mm. uh, to behead, behead, strangle, and or drown all six, as well as gun down all of their family members. Again, the story says, it's unclear what six justices what they might have done to draw the ire of the Democratic donor. Come on. I swear to you, that is in the story. Stop it. It, And I I will say, every story that I read about this had the same sort of disclaimers on it. We all know what six they were. They were the conservative ones. And And again, with air quotes, we're talking about John Roberts in that group. But yeah, (laughs) Yeah. uh, the conservative justices are the ones that were being targeted by the act blue donor. I mean, I... It's... Theore- like they, I understand that you have to say allegedly or you have to yeah, have know, some sort of qualification if you don't have the facts locked down. Well, but can we at least include right. the obvious in these well, stories? the Blaze story did. Okay, good. Uh, it says, although it's unclear, um, their June 2022 decision on jobs, uh, Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization did anger some pro-abortion extremists no i had noticed no, i, I had noticed that well at all. i mean you could have you could have seen the you know the hate crimes and terrorist attacks uh targeting pro-life centers uh or churches or individuals you know that all happened but they, they don't really need to cover that either because they're not for violence they're not violent at all i it's you know whose fault this is donald trump mm. oh my gosh of course of course it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there's something else. Um, the, uh, you know, remember that thing? Uh, what was it called? Uh, oh, it's the most dangerous moment since the Civil War. Uh, January, January 6th. 6th of yeah. course. Yeah. So <laughs> January 6th, apparently um, the National Guard was, uh, was standing by, ready to come in. Within nine minutes, they were ready and call and say, we're ready to come. And uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi's sergeant at arms said no. And uh, then when they finally asked, uh, they, when, the, when the National Guard asked uh, again, like an hour later, are you sure you don't need the National Guard? He said, well, it's in committee now. We're trying to get a hold of everybody and find out if we should call them because I don't want to higgledy piggledy call out the National Guard, you know, have people here that could control things. Uh, it is the first time in 219 years, the history of the National Guard, that they were not allowed to respond to a riot in Washington, D.C. 
first time. And it was Nancy Pelosi's office that stopped it. And finally, finally, after discussing it and making sure they got everything right, it was uh, three hours and 19 minutes later, they said, you can come. Everything was over by the time they got there. Now, Hmm. that sounds like maybe there's something that we should probably, I don't know, look into. Something doesn't seem right about that one. You're talking about the day democracy died? Yeah, the day democracy died. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Congressman uh, Congressman Matt Gates says um, there, he has a Homeland Security whistleblower, claims five assassin teams are now hunting Donald Trump. Can I just ask you a question? This is Jeez. honest. Five. What does it feel like to be Melania Trump or Barron or any of the kids? What does it feel like to be them today? You know, my wife and I were talking about it uh, last night. We were on our way to a fundraiser, and I was talking about uh, Trump and uh, his family. And I said, you know, the one thing, and I said this even when I was, you know, an anti-Trumper, a forever Mm. anti-Trumper. The one thing you cannot question is his children. His children obviously love him, but look at who those children are. I mean, they're all successful. They're all normal. He had three wives, so he has children from three different marriages. Somehow or another, this guy who hates women found a way to co-parent with these women. And by the way, when you hate, when you hate women, what you do is you... You marry strong, strong women. That's what you do. Because, uh, you know, oh, no, that. Yeah, it's only Putin that is afraid of strong, mixed race women. Uh, so uh, anyway, look at his children. They're kind. They're charitable. They're not screwed up. Look at his daughters. I mean, doesn't that say something about the guy? Uh, you know, he's writing all these books about. Uh, you know, how to be successful. I think he should, and I mean this sincerely, I think he should write one on parenting and being a dad because I don't know how he did it. Look how wealthy they are and how, and how uh, independent and how successful each of them are in their own way. And happy. They seem happy. He has obviously a very unique perspective of how being a parent in a very unique environment let's put it that way like right like he, he he's gone through a lot uh, he's been in the public eye he's been very successful running businesses all these other things I, I, you know I, there is uh, there are a lot of people out there who are in situations not to trump's level but that are right. somewhat similar in their in their work lives trying to figure out how to balance that with their family how do you do it if you're trying to do both of those things at the same time it would be fa- it would be a fa- i will say it would be a fascinating read so my kids um, i was going to marlago i don't know a year year and a half ago two years ago and uh tanya is just so unimpressed with everything she just is like we have to dress up <laughs> yeah yeah uh you know, I, I've got some things i got to do. She's just not impressed by any of it, which has kept me very, very sane and grounded. Um, but uh, we were invited to go to Mar-a-Lago, and uh, she's like, uh, gee, I think pretty much anything other than that would be good. Uh, and she's like that with anything that is, you know, it's, it's not like the Met Ball or the Oscars. She would be like, no. Anyway, um, so I, I invite my two kids, and I, I call, and I say, hey, can I bring my two kids instead of my wife? She's sick. And, <laughs> and they're like, yeah, sure, bring. So I get there, and he's like, where's Cheyenne and Rafe? And I said, they didn't finish their homework. Mm. And uh, I wondered what he was going to say, and he said, what do you mean? And I said, I told them for three days, you don't get all your homework done. You're not coming with me. And he looked at me, and he put his hand out, and he shook my hand, and he said, good for you, Dad. Mm. And he said, can I make a quick video for him? And I said, sure. I should find it. Uh, I said, sure. And he took the phone, started the video, and he said, Rafe and Cheyenne, I am so sorry I didn't get a chance to meet you, but your dad did the right thing. 
when you finish your homework and you get good grades, you come out and see me. I mean, that was <laughs> that's great. Cool. Oh, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, so there's some other things uh, that are in the news today. We have the five assassin teams that uh, apparently uh, three of them, they say, two of them are domestic and three of them are foreign. Can, can somebody help me with what happens in this country if Donald Trump is shot and killed? God, I think people... Somebody said this, and I wish I could remember who it was, but somebody pointed this out, and I thought it was a, a good observation, which was basically, like, I think a lot of people look at this almost like a soap opera, mm -hmm. and they look at this as, like, entertainment. Nothing's real anymore. Yeah, and you kind of look at this, oh my gosh, this would be an amazing development in this Netflix series, if, the, if that guy got shot, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's how mm -hmm. I think a lot of people look at this. The entire country is at risk if something like this actually occurs and works mm -hmm. uh, from the assassin's mm -hmm. perspective. We, we are in... Mass, we're close to the brink as it is. I know. Uh, I know. Can you imagine if something like this and, actually and, and happens? Imagine, God only knows. I mean, you're, you're not going to trust anybody. Have you heard what's happening with the investigation? Ron DeSantis has taken over the investigation from the FBI. He said yesterday, I'm concerned we have been rebuffed by uh, the FBI and DOJ. Our investigators were, were, were rebuffed. Just going to the fence line outside of the Trump International Golf Club in West Palm. So they're doing an investigation. The federal government wouldn't let them even get close to the fence line. He said, here's the thing. There are multiple violations of Florida law across multiple jurisdictions. We think at least three judicial circuits. This guy committed potential violations of Florida law. We have a duty to investigate this. We have a duty to bring the appropriate charges. We also have a duty to inform the public of, of how this happened. You're, if something happens to this guy, and it could be done by Russia, it could be done by Iran, do you think that's what everybody's going to think? Everybody's going to think, yeah, it might have been done by Iran, but where the hell was the Department of Justice? Right. Where was Secret Service? Where was the FBI? You knew this was coming. You said it. It's the ultimate Bubba effect. 